Darren Clarkson King, it's a long name, isn't it? So, Daz, for short, yeah. <laughs> okay, it, it was Clarkson for quite a long time, then I got married and took my wife's name. Uh, and King Clarkson just sounds like a third world dictator. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, just a little bit of about me to finish off what's been said. I'm an extreme kayaker. Anybody really know what kayaking is? These sort of big plastic banana things, you see them on roofs going to Wales and Scotland. Yeah. yeah. I now run a company called Pureland Expeditions and we do adventure travel trips to Nepal. We have an office in Kathmandu. We also run to Bhutan, Tibet and various other places. But for my part, I want to talk to you today about fear. Like a lot of people have spoken about fear. I disagree with it and I'll come to that later. I think it's the wrong word. But we'll come to that in about six minutes. <laughs> okay. But I'll, a little bit about me. Like I said, I've done these trips as purely on expeditions. Uh, I came back from Nepal after a season out there, suffering from jet lag. Who suffered from jet lag? Yeah. Who's not travelled? Because <laughs> sometimes didn't go up. Yeah. So four o'clock in the morning, I'm awake. I'm online googling and Berghaus. Anybody heard of Berghaus clothing? Yeah, Berghaus are offering a sponsorship fund for somebody to have a crazy adventure. So I decide I'm going to canoe down Everest. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> it's four in the morning, you know? <laughs> so I like this little proposal. And uh, I've canoed down Everest before. It's not like a foible. I've actually done it before. Uh, there's three rivers that come off Everest. One is a long book, two comes out of Tibet, circles round. Into, and then the other two is the dud curves in the island. But I decided at four in the morning to solo them. So that's no support crew, no food caches, no satellite phone, nothing, just me. And I wrote this little bit of a blog post, sent it to Berghaus, and I came against a couple of finalists, me and two cyclists. Went to Piervoort, yeah? I'm not losing cyclists. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I, I won. I got some money. I went to Nepal and canoe down Everest. Not really the part of this talk, but it sort of gives a little bit of my backstory. Yeah. When I was a kid growing up, yeah, I'm make no apologies. I'm a Yorkshireman, and I'm really sorry about that. Like north of Watford. Jeez. Yeah, I'm really sorry, guys. But I always thought that expeditions needed lots of planning, lots of preparation, lots of money. Yeah? And we all read books, don't we, about Hillary and Tenzing and Mallory. And we think, oh, I can't do any of that. So I got a proper job, went to university, studied, got a proper job, shirt and tie, nine to five. Yeah? Yeah, we've all been there. You're still there, aren't you? <laughs> Got this 9 to 5 job and thought, oh, I can't do that, this expedition malarkey, this belongs to somebody else, it's a different world, you know. And I knuckled down to study, knuckled down to work. And then one day, I bought a guidebook, White Water Nepal, written by Peter Knowles and Dave Allardyce. And they became my inspirations. The book's now in the third edition, and I was co-author of the third edition. Wow. Now, this is 14 years ago, yeah? Dave Allardyce, I just want to mention, was a massive inspiration for me. Two hours ago, I just got an email to say he died of lung cancer. I was sent to Fargo Square when I got that. He's also a Kiwi. Yeah, so it's quite fitting that I'm here, isn't it? Okay. So anyway, I, t I wanted to go to Nepal. I took a step. Do you know what step I took? That one. This is actually a recent photograph. That step. It's not that hard to go on expedition, guys. You buy a flight out of Heathrow. <laughs> you know, it's that simple. Yeah, we all know how to book flights, don't we? Yeah, yeah who doesn't? I'll show you. <laughs> yeah. You just do that. So, you know, I, I left my job, I left my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. I'll be back, darling. It's only like a three month gap year thing. <laughs> no, I never went back. Um, <laughs> But you basically, you turn up at an airport with a canoe on your shoulder. When they ask you what it is, you tell you it's a suitcase. <laughs> Put it on the scale. Okay, I was there three months. In three months in Nepal, I was carting kayaks around on the back of rickshaws. <laughs> you guys have got rickshaws around here, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's okay. You know, and now, 14 years later, we've got an office out there. You just go back a second. Sorry. 
Should we go back? Lovely. So, you know, 40 years later, from a really humble beginning of being a little bit of a bum and living in the dirt and having one meal a day and carting this crap about, you know, and I make a living out of it. But people ask me what I do for a living and I don't really know because I'm not a businessman and I've had to put, so I say shit, I've had to put trainers on for you guys. <laughs> I'm normally in flip flops. But this is not what I'm into. I'm not into kayaking for the sake of business or adventure travel or as a co-author or as a writer. It's not why I'm into it. Why I'm into it is because kayaking takes me places nothing else can. I'm not talking about geography places, places in here. Yeah. I'm sure we've all got that special thing, whether it be music, cycling, climbing, World of Warcraft maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and there's a special place where inside, that's all that matters, yeah? You forget about your mortgage. You forget about your bad day, yeah? You forget that Vodafone are hounding you for the bill you've not paid. Yeah, that special place. Let's go show you a quick video. This is actually a waterfall in North Wales, which is where I live. And the biggest expedition that I've done is come here tonight for you guys. <laughs> so let's just show this video and I think it might explain it a bit more clearly. I had a dream. It was not all a dream. It was a bright sun. Was extinguished, and the stars did wander darkling in the eternal space, rayless and pathless, and the icy earth swung blind and blackening in the moonless air. Thank you. The reason I kayak, yeah, is not for the video footage, that was just a fluke, yeah? It's for the moment of pure joy. And when nothing matters, yeah? When the passion and the grace and the silence and the noise sort of grabs you by the balls and just says, now's the time, yeah? And it's really special. And the question I want to ask you, yeah, is not what people want me to ask, which is, when was the last time you pushed yourself further than you could ever be pushed? But rather, when was the last time you put yourself in a place to open yourself up to the passion and the grace and the silence of the noise of the now. That's my question, guys. Mm -hmm.